Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and get rid of these pixels on this Sega Game Gear. So you can see that up in the top corner here and everywhere else as well. You can especially see it when you turn the brightness down. Yeah, looks like a starry night. Now some of you might recognise this Sega Game Gear, that's because this is the one from the second trying to fix video I did on the Sega Game Gear. Now I did manage to get the sound working by changing the capacitors but unfortunately I can't do anything about the pixels on the screen. Now a lot of you including Chris from Gadget UK 164 said to me that by massaging the screen you might, might be able to get rid of the pixels. So uh, somebody else said that by tapping it with a matchstick it might get rid of it, uh, you know, creating a bit of static. So uh, I thought, well, why not give it a go? Because it's the sort of thing that a lot of people would be interested in. They might not want to take apart their Game Gear for risk of breaking it. But because I've got another two of these that I'm going to be doing in another Fix It future videos, I'm willing to uh, risk damaging this screen here because I've got two more. Now, obviously, I don't want to break it, but... Uh, it would be interesting to see if you could get rid of these pixels here. Now, I can't massage the screen through here because obviously you've got this, uh, you know, this outer screen on it, this bezel type screen. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take it apart, turn it on, and then that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to massage the screen where all the pixels are just to see if it makes a difference. If not, maybe I might try tapping them with some kind of matchstick or something like that or a little bit of plastic just to see if it makes any difference or not. I thought it would be an interesting video and it's the sort of thing that maybe people have read about online and they're wondering would it work. So obviously if it works in this video you know it might work for yourself. If it doesn't work in this video maybe you might not want to then take your own one apart. So that's the reason I'm going to do it. So I'm going to fast forward through the dismantling until we get to the actual screen itself and then I'm going to try tapping it and rubbing it and stuff see what happens. At the end if it's no worse, I can always clean it up with a microfiber cloth. So that's what this video is going to be about, and you never know, it might be successful. Now, just so I can give you a real close look at the pixels, because a lot of you were saying that you couldn't quite work them out uh, you know, in the last video, because some people were saying it might be related to dust. But this, to me, doesn't look like dust. And also, if you look at it, it looks like they're different colors as well. Can you see? So by doing a close-up of them, Hopefully those of you that know about these things will be able to give more info down in the comments and then you see even if it doesn't help me out because for example if I break this screen it's not going to help me out but it might help out uh, you know viewers watching this now or in the future. Okay so that's where the, the big collection is and like somebody said it definitely does look like a fingerprint or something doesn't it? It looks like kind of sort of pressure on that part of the screen. I don't believe you'd get pressure through the the bezel because we're still quite a long way away from the actual LCD itself but that's what it looks like. Right so I'm going to take this apart now and next time you'll see it it will be all open. Right, okay, so I've got it apart now, and what I've done is I've just put a little bit of tissue paper just under here just to stop these things shorting against the base here. So now the screen's completely exposed, so I'm going to turn it back on. I don't even need to put a game in because I should be able to see the pixels and everything just by turning it on. So let's turn it on. There we go, you can see them all now. Right, so I'm going to zoom right in. All right, let's start in this little top corner here. I don't know if I'm going to be in the, probably going to be in the way. My finger's going to be in the way.
that bleed that bleed wasn't there before and now that's not uh, you know that's not going but interestingly it did go from the other two bits Well, I'm going to turn it upside down and do the other side. Look at pressure from the front and back. But again, on the back, I've got a load of plastic, you see, so I'm not going to really be able to get to the, the actual LCD bit that easy. No? Okay, nothing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have a quick look at all the comments just to see. Somebody else mentioned something about, I think, rubbing a CD or something on it. So uh, I'm going to just have a quick read through just to see if there's anything else. Okay, so I've been reading all the comments again and uh, yeah, three more things to try. One of them is rubbing it with a woody glove. So on this one here I have one that you, know, you can use your phone with and normal fingers as well. Somebody said maybe they've heard that flashing uh, a, a bright light onto it. I'm not sure if this is going to be bright enough, but a bright light onto it can make a difference. And lastly, rubbing a CD on it because it can create a static charge. So let's go. Let's see if it will do anything. Okay, that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that screen a really good clean now because I've got poor prints all over it and put it back together and at least I'm pleased I haven't broken it. Right, okay, as you can see the pixels are still there but at least it's still working and obviously when you're actually playing the game you're going to have it kind of around there so that's the sort of quality that you've got. Now, uh, rather than this video be a complete failure, what I'm going to do is, this has got a few scratches up the top, so if I turn this off, you will see that if you look up, uh, I don't know, how am I going to show you this? Right, can you see those scratches there when I shine it on the light? So, the screen's very good, but uh, there is definitely scratches up the top there, and you can buy new bezels to go on here, but somebody mentioned that you can use Brasso, which is good for getting rid of the, the, uh, you know, the scratches. Uh, now, I don't have any of that, but I said, well, maybe I can use T-Cut, and somebody else got back and said, no, don't use T-Cut, it's bad for plastics. You can use Plast X, and I actually already bought some of this about a week ago for uh, a Dreamcast fix. So I'm going to try using that on that just to see if it does remove those scratches, because a lot of Game Gears out there will be plagued by a load of scratches over the last 20 odd years so if it's a, an easy fix that would be a good one so that's what I'm going to do now right so this is the stuff I bought it was £10 in the UK from Halfords and it's called Plast this one says RX I think but I think it's the same as Plast X it, maybe it's just a newer version and it is supposed to remove fine scratches so I believe I could be completely wrong I believe what it does is it actually fills in the scratches with this product here and allows the light to just you know bounce straight off the top of it so you don't see the scratches so uh, let's give it a go and see what uh, see what happens I'm just going to put a bit in the middle there and I'm going to rub this all in Now you can buy the new bezels, but uh, if you could just do this, it would be nice. The difference with this is that this is probably just filling in the scratches while if you were to use Brasso maybe it would just take off for example a fraction of a millimetre off the top of it to get it all back to one level but that's going to take a lot of work because you're going to have to you know rub it all down but I presume that would be a longer lasting better finish while with this it will uh, maybe you need to use this stuff maybe every you know couple of months or something I don't know right I can definitely still see scratches Let's take it over, I think it's better though, let's take it over to the light and see what it looks like. Okay, so if you have a look at it there, again I'll have to watch back the video to see, but to me that definitely looks better. Well that was a nice easy way to do it. I'm sure it's not going to hold out long term and you can still see some scratches, it's not scratch free so it's not as good as changing over that bezel completely, but it's not bad. Not bad at all for a couple of minutes' work. Well, okay, so, uh, yeah, that's it. 
Unfortunately for me, I couldn't get the pixels fixed on this Sega Game Gear by rubbing, tapping, using a woolly glove, CD, or shining a light on them. You may have more luck with it, but uh, at least now the bezel does look nice and shiny, doesn't it? Look at that. So, uh, yeah, maybe that Plast X is a bit of a winner. So, again, <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't get the pixels fixed, but I gave it a go. And uh, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more trying to fix and how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.